Hi, this is Paisley Trees. This is Dr. Crow. And welcome to episode four, four. <laughs> forgetting, <laughs> of um, Let's Play the Ottomans in Civ 6. So the last time we conquered Medina, so yeah. a surprise to um, everyone, I'm sure. <laughs> and we're working our way towards Baghdad. Yeah, we're still at war with the Hungarians. Yes, but... we are. <laughs> but, oh yes, I think we got Jerusalem just in that last turn when we conquered Medina. Oh, very nice. And got the holy site. You yeah. can see here, you completed a quest. So, great. So, hopefully, they have a lot of swordsmen. How much is it to levy? A lot. We don't have that. So, hopefully, you know, they'll just help, help us out mm -hmm. and keep them away from our capital yeah. as we move uh, units in. Great. So, we're moving on to Baghdad. Do you want to explain where that is historically for the Ottomans? Yeah. So, we just took Medina. And so, that was... Uh, undertaken by Suleiman's father, Selim. Um, and Suleiman actually ends up uh, fighting the Hungarians and defeating them at Mohac and conquering Baghdad from the Safavids. So actually, we're pretty close to, you know, Suleiman's time period right now. Yeah, which I think this episode will be sort of focused on him. Yeah, introduction to Suleiman. Um, yeah. yeah, there's some, he has a, you know, Nice civilopedia entry you can read, um, but we can give a little bit more historical background and how historians of the Ottoman Empire kind of view him specifically. Right, but before we do, I think there's a few last things to say about Selim the First, who is mm -hmm. his father. I was watching the episode, and I realized you know there's a lot we missed, especially a lot of the negative sides to Selim's rule. Do you want to mm -hmm. discuss? Um, why Salim's nickname is Salim the Grim. Right, yeah, his name is, uh, his nickname is Yavuz Salim. Yavuz is usually translated as the Grim, I guess. Yes. And um, it's because his reign was quite a bloody one, and he is a very controversial sultan. Um, a couple reasons for this. Uh, he was engaged in quite brutal conflict with Safavid Iran, um, during this time period, there was a kind of very strong, apocalyptic, messianic sort of feeling in the air because right. of the approaching Islamic millennium. Uh, so the year 1591 is the year 1000 in the Islamic calendar, and right. that was considered to be like a very, like the end of the world, basically. Right. And do you want to explain how the Islamic calendar um, is sort of formed or just briefly <laughs> oh, it's a lunar case, yeah, yeah it's a lunar know. calendar so it doesn't quite match up with the solar calendar um and its date starting date is when the prophet moves to medina and establishes the muslim community there so In 622 i think yeah is so, the equivalent yeah so the year 1000 in th that calendar is 1591 1592 and so the 1500s really is a century of expectation um, charismatic, theocratic kind of politics. And the Safavids and their leader, Ismail, really uh, typify that kind of politics. And when Ismail arrives on the scene, all throughout the Islamic world, there's this kind of expectation that he's going to be the one to usher in this new era. Throughout the Ottoman Empire, there are these, um, you know, kind of Shia aligned sects called the Kuzulbash. Um, who are not necessarily pro Safavid, but you know, they kind of seem to be in the same kind of area. And so Salim's response is to kind of massacre them, right? right? And so this is why, from the descendants of the Kizobash today, there's a lot of controversy about him. Right, um, which are often like on the Anatolian border with mm -hmm. uh, Iran today. Yeah. But also in Iran today, right? Yeah, in Iran. And, um, you know, ultimately, Selim defeats Ismail at the Battle of Chaldaran. And um, that's one of the kind of, you know, turning points in Safavid power. Uh, but it's also one in which the Ottoman Empire starts to chart a course more towards um, a kind of more orthodox direction. Right. Um, Speaking of Iran, the Persians, I am trying really hard <laughs> to find them. Yeah. But I found more borders with Hungary. So. Okay. I don't know. I may just. I assume then that's not them here. They have to be here. Around there. So yeah. I might turn around. Um, yeah. 
Let's keep going with this war. <laughs> uh, I don't... Okay, so here I am <laughs> with a lot of low health mm -hmm. uh, units. Tr I really just want to protect that archer that archer because it can do a lot of damage for me. There's another archer here, so I think... You gotta move back. I gotta right? move back, right? Like this isn't looking too great mm -hmm. for me. Um, so let's move everybody back. Is that the right move? Okay. Yeah, it's just everyone back up, <laughs> including this guy, probably because of the archer. But what's a good spot for him? The archer's here, right? I forgot. Mm. Maybe just into the forest. Nope. That could be fine. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry, continue what you were saying. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, Selim dies, and Suleiman is his only son, his only surviving son. Oh, you got a great general. Ooh, very nice. Um, so, for Suleiman, he's a little bit lucky, he doesn't have to fight the kind of civil wars right. upon the death of his father, like the other sultans do. Um, one of the things that happens during Suleiman's reign and afterwards is this kind of practice of all sons fighting each other right. stops and instead upon arriving to the throne the sultan kind of has all his brothers all rival claimants killed strangled yes. very uh, grim very grim yeah and Suleiman takes it to a little bit of an extreme by having his own sons executed before right so Suleiman's sort of family relationships yeah. is kind of interesting and is the topic of a really interesting TV show, uh, Magnificent Century. Yeah, Mutasha um, Museum. So if you have like 300 hours or so to spare, <laughs> I really recommend. Yeah, out of the kind of, you know, like Ottoman historical dramas. That I mean, one's the best. It's the best. It's probably the most accurate too. The other ones you, are well, a little... Well, we haven't seen the other one, so you can't <laughs> I, I've say seen, that. I've seen some of the other ones. You it's have. not... <laughs> you seen the Abdul Hamid one, right? I only saw 10 it's minutes of it. And awful. No, Just awful. Eric, don't say opinions that'll get us canceled. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> if you're a fan of that show, it's... It's... it's no. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so his family relationships are very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, first, starting with his wife. He's one of the first... Uh, he is the first sultan to have a wife that's... Um, legally married to him and is also his uh, concubine. Yeah, that's right. So early Ottoman sultans, as we talked about, I think, did intermarry with other, you know, important families, other royalty. Um, part of this kind of move to kind of seclude the royal family and seclude the Ottoman emperor as this kind of, you know, sort of, not quite divine, but, you know, kind of superhuman figure was to abandon that practice of intermarriage and instead only produce heirs from women in the imperial harem. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is that, you know, they wouldn't intermarry, so there wouldn't be any kind of other families of claims on the empire. Right. Um, Suleiman has this, but in a kind of unique innovation, he marries one of these uh, concubines. Right. Hudem. Hudem. And uh, <laughs> and she is commonly known as Roxolana. You can s there's a little bit about her in the Civilopedia, um, probably of Ukrainian origin, and um, yeah, she is becomes a really important figure, both for Suleiman obviously, but as a political figure in her own right as well, as a patron, as a you know um, political figure where she actually patrons um, a complex, a mm -hmm. mosque complex on her own, which is not that unusual for the Islamic empire. Unlike other sort of European mm -hmm. conceptions of law for women, in Islamic law, women can have property um, and also can be patrons of these sort of public places and you know they'll have their names on it. They'll also have their names in the wakfia, which is the uh, endowment deeds. So not only does Hudem patron, um, a, you know, it's it's not the most famous mosque complex, but her daughter, mm -hmm. Mihri Mah Sultan, has, you know, some a couple of very beautiful mosques in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of them is uh, at Edirne Kape, which means the gate to Edirne in Istanbul. So like if this was a real map, it would be like here. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and yeah, so maybe we can show you an image of that yeah. mosque. It's probably one of my favorites of the time period, but uh, it's a very unique time period for Ottoman buildings as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that scout came back. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I have bigger problems, though, <laughs> on this front here. We do have a swordsman here. We can get that general help. The swordsman. Yeah, out. I'm just, I will be taking two. From the catapult. Maybe you have to move back here. I think I have to definitely move back. Yeah. But I also want to use my archers um, as well. So maybe I just, how far back should I move? Two or one? Um, I need to bait everyone. So let's move back to you. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that works. Um, anyways, yeah. So mosque architecture or sort of the architecture of this time period is very interesting mm -hmm. as well. Do you want to discuss a little bit about what's happening? Yeah. So, I mean, Suleiman's reign is a reign of big, you know, personalities, I guess. And uh, one of them is this famous architect, Mimar Sinan. Mimar means architect, mm -hmm. and uh, he is kind of like the equivalent to Suleiman in Ottoman architecture. So he's seen as the peak, you know, the encapsulation of the Ottoman style. Um, he produces these very famous, large, um, you know, just massive structures like the Suleymaniye Mosque in Istanbul mm -hmm. and like Selimiye Mosque in Adirne, which we showed. showed. Yeah. yeah. So Selim the second is after Suleiman. It's his, his son. son yeah. Selim the first is his father. So just to give a little <laughs> yeah <idea>. clarification. <laughs> and Mimar Sinan is both the court architect for uh, Suleiman and Sinan the second. Yeah, and um, yeah. So you know his his buildings are you know kind of almost in conversation. I mean in conversation with. The Byzantine structures of Hagia Sophia, yeah. Um, but exactly. it's also, you know, has a very um, kind of self-referential aspect to his work. He kind of builds on his previous structures. Um, he is one of the few Ottoman architects that we have an autobiography from, right? Which he discusses actually mm -hmm. uh, the sort of competition he has with the Hagia Sophia in the sort of dome structure. So he says, my dome is bigger. I'm the first one to achieve a dome bigger than Hagia Sophia. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very competitive discourse with the city they're in, right? Hagia Sophia mm -hmm. is in Istanbul. The Byzantines are no longer around in sort of the, in, as like a state. Uh, and yet it's still very much on the top of the minds of all these um, building or it's the top of the mind of mm -hmm. Mimar Sinan and the buildings he's um, commissioning or well we don't know if he's building them himself you know it's probably <laughs> more like yeah it's like community of architects <laughs> right he doesn't do everything himself yeah. even though we sort of say you know Mimar Sinan built over a hundred mosques or whatever he has apprentices a, a and, workshop yeah. basically and it's the same with sultans right like we always yeah. discuss you know this happens during Suleiman's time that happens but uh that's kind of an old way of thinking about history right mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of great man great woman idea like you know it's an issue with Suleiman's reign because again this is the reign of big personalities so Suleiman himself Hudem Ibrahim Pasha who we'll talk about Sinan, mm -hmm. um, Barbarossa, the admiral, uh, Piri Reis is a map maker. Like these are all very, very famous figures, and so it's very easy to tell that history as like this great person did this and this great person did that. But right. that's you know that's not really how states work, right? Like yeah. states have economic, you know, structures, political structures, legal structures. Um, and it's obviously a, an era of transition in that in those spheres, right? But it wasn't all the work of singular individuals, right? Exactly. Um, and you know, like uh, in terms of law, for instance, Ebu Sud Effendi is the kind of very famous. Um, mm, some yeah. era scholar. Uh, Sheikh Al Islam, which is like a kind of the the chief jurist chief kind of theological right. um person and you know one of his projects is to try and reconcile 
all these different kinds of law in the Ottoman Empire. And he does so. Like he, he has raised these very important commentaries that are very, very influential. But that provokes a backlash later on, right? right. Many of Suleiman's policies provoke backlashes later on, or they seem to have long-term structural effects that really cause the next century to be quite difficult for the Ottomans. So this is why when we just say, oh, this is the apex, this was this great man who did everything, it misses a lot of the, the hidden aspects. Right, exactly. Um, so I just got Ibrahim Pasha, oh, speaking of another nice. great man. <laughs> I put him in Medina. I, you know, I got two era score and I'm thinking, how am I actually going to win a golden age, which I really, really want because mm -hmm. I can then get signs for my commercial hubs. Yeah. But I need to get to 42. I'm at 24. Okay. I got about 12 turns. <laughs> All right. How many turns? I could give a wonder maybe. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we talked about this. We saw that in Edirne, we can actually build Temple of Artemis, which gives you, um, Three housing, which is nice, but also plus one amenity for uh, each plantation, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Each camp, pasture, and plantation, which uh, would be great. And I think right here, okay, so I'll do it next turn. I think I'll finish the commercial hub first because I have time, and then maybe I'll chop out Temple of Artemis. That sounds good. Right. There is um, a Hungarian spearman, I think. It's there. fine. It's fine. It's fine. All Whatever. Right. Looks like Jerusalem kind of got destroyed, huh? Uh, yeah, good thing I didn't levy, or else maybe I should have levied. <laughs> I could have done a better job. Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's go into the next turn. Yeah, and Ibrahim Pasha, um, again, probably the kind of uh, paradigmatic grand vizier. <laughs> Someone died, sorry. Who died? Uh, well, let me... Where is Persia? This Hopefully is so frustrating. A, a warrior, right? Let me see. I think it was my own warrior. Warrior, it's fine. It's I mean, okay. I can't afford to promote them anyways because I don't have enough iron. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's going to be the swordsman doing most of the fighting. Um, and I got a promotion here. Should I take it? Yeah, if you can keep your swordsman alive here. Yeah, my swordsman will be fine. Oh, this one. Yeah. Maybe I'll just move the swordsman in front of the warriors. And I really want that catapult to come out, so maybe I can move mm -hmm. away more and see if that'll help. Can um, that guy shoot? Yes, let me, sorry, I just wanted to make that promotion. Who can shoot this guy? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so Ibrahim Pasha. Yeah, um, another great man, you know, he's <laughs> yeah. one of these figures we learn about a, yeah. in history a yeah. lot. Uh, he is Grand Vizier, Sadrazam in Ottoman, um, which is like the chief minister of the kind of imperial cabinet, which is called the Divan. And um, he is of Venetian origin. Um, no! What happened? My good, my good archer. Hmm. Not my good archer. <laughs> Why wasn't it the bad archer? Why wasn't it the bad archer? How did they Oof. get that? Will I be fine? I don't know. <laughs> Do I need to like back up more and rethink this whole fight? We'll see. Okay. Not not right now. I think I'm still okay. It's just one archer, right? Yes, yeah, so you can replace it pretty easily. Yeah, but it had three promotions. Can I really replace three promotions? It is what it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's nothing I can do now. Uh, what do I do? It's really hard to focus <laughs> and think about like, oh yeah, Ibrahim Pasha, Hudam, whatever. Okay, well, at least I have retribution. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Ibrahim Pasha is an important figure but he has a very tragic ending right he, he does yeah he is executed by Suleiman. not unexpected for a grand vizier uh Selim also executed i think most of his grand viziers but uh it's a little bit bitter for ibrahim because he was very much a kind of close friend and confidant of Suleiman. um we don't know exactly why he was executed it seems a lot of people blame hudem for it um, Always blaming the woman. Yeah, he was also very unpopular, uh, kind of a showboat. He had this very, you know, ornate mansion on the 
Hippodrome on the At Maidana. And uh, he... Yeah, which is what we spoke about last time, right? As the yeah. government plaza. So he also built a lot of statues, right? Yeah, he decided to, you know, maybe because he's Venetian, I don't know. But he really liked these kind of like Renaissance statues of like Venus and stuff. And uh, people in Istanbul were not very happy about that. Sculptures like that were not <laughs> permissible. Right. And, because uh, the idea is like in Islam that statues are... Um, are sort of an invitation to polytheism. Yeah, it's like, sort of like Moses and the bull. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's a lot more leeway for two-dimensional images, but three-dimensional images were definitely, uh, of people specifically, were not very uh, smiled upon. So, um, <laughs> smiled upon. <laughs> did people say that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, um, yeah, he set up all these statues in his mansion, and there was a kind of quip at the time which said that you know, one Abraham, you mean the prophet Abraham, took down all the idols, and the next Abraham put them back up, right? So... <laughs> Which is a reference to Abraham from... Yeah, the, the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Or the Quran. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he was executed. Very sad for Abraham. Mm -hmm. um, but he does kind of set the standard for what the Grand Vizier office can do. And what we see is in the... 1600s, uh, particularly by the 1670s, 80s, the Grand Vizier's office has grown in power to the point that it basically kind of runs the whole state. Um, so, and it's really Ibrahim that kind of establishes what the Grand Vizier's office can do. Uh, so we're very influential in that respect as well. Right. So I'm thinking I need to sort of bring in all these levied units as mm -hmm. bait and just start start moving in with them as well. Or maybe yeah. I can come pillage. Uh, that, one be, that might be good. And in terms of civic, I want to work on feudalism now. I need farms, which if I can get Baghdad before the tur like the era ends, that would be great. Yeah. How many turns do I have? I'm, I already have like the nine turns. Nine turns. <laughs> Okay. I think I can do it. We'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of like big things coming up. And if I win Baghdad, that will be nice. Mm -hmm. And then I can flip maybe one of these. Uh, one of, yeah, Cahokia, which is his. I think that's going to be era score. Let's keep going. Every time All I right. press next turn, I'm so nervous. <laughs> so everything's fine. No one died. That's, that's good. good. <laughs> okay, eight turns. So... And then Temple of Artemis will be some scores That's if I true. can get that on time. Can you get it in time? We'll see. Um, I can at least kill a swordsman, which is nice. And then I think I need to move this guy on a farm soon mm -hmm. so I can pillage. Um, and this guy's bait for the uh, shots here. And you as well. And this one's going to come in, sneak around, get some pillages. <laughs> if I can get apprenticeship as well, mm -hmm. that'll be more era score. I really just want to meet Persia. I think that'll be era score. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Great. Do they have a <gasps> man at arms? Oh, no. How am I going to fight a man at arms? Well, can the, how does the horse do? Not too well. No. Um, hmm. I mean, at least it's all the way up here, so maybe I can keep <laughs> baiting, baiting it. it. Yeah. yeah, let's bait. I'm sorry, warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Ottomans have levied units. Yeah, for sure. That's something they do. So it's not like wrong that I levied Zanzibar. No, of course not. <laughs> do you yeah, want to discuss much... the Ottoman uh, army system? Yeah, well, the Ottomans... Um... There's kind of two or three sort of very famous aspects of the Ottoman army. One part of it are, you could call them kind of irregular militias or kind of, you know, religious soldiers of fortune who were called Ghazis. And they were very important in the early Ottoman Empire. Not so much later on, but they do play a, you know, kind of important role in the campaigns. Um, beyond that, we have a system of cavalry who are called Sipahis. Speaking of cavalry, just got my horsemen. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they're a little bit like knights in the sense that they are given a plot of land called a timar or a ziamet, 
which um, they collect taxes from in exchange for their military service. Right. It's different from the feudal system, even though we're getting feudalism right now. <laughs> it's different because they're okay. not hereditary, or they're not necessarily hereditary. Uh, so, um, you know, the Timars or Ziamets can be revoked by the Sultan, and they're not a kind of a landed aristocracy the way that knights become. Um, and then lastly, there are soldiers who are directly attached to the court. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some Sepahis that are like this, but there are also um, what are called the new troops or Yenicheri, Jan Janissaries in English, right. which are directly uh, under the command of the court because they are legally um, enslaved. Right, so they're legally slaves of the court, um, and you know this varies from being more of a kind of contractual relationship in terms of the sepahis, to in the case of the janissaries, reflecting actually they're you know kidnapping as children and being brought to the Ottoman court to be trained as soldiers. So there's a difference in the way that that operates, but the janissaries are obviously the most famous example of that, and the um, system of kidnapping, recruitment, and then, you know, training is called Def Shirme. And that's going to be a really important thing that we talk about when we come to the Janissaries. Right. But, but Def Shirme also isn't just for Janissaries, it's also for soldier bureaucrats and these kind of things. Right, so, so Ibrahim Pasha is an example of that. Yeah, yeah. I assume Mimar Sinan is as well. Um, I, I assume a lot of these pashas are, mm -hmm. uh, especially at this time period, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's definitely one of the ways in which um, there was a kind of social mobility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the same time, the Dev Shirmin was a kind of very brutal system, right? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I feel like, you know, the whole historiography of the Dev Shirmin system and Ottoman slavery in general, mm -hmm. you know, there's different types of Ottoman, there's different types of slavery in the Ottoman Empire. This is one of them. And it gets like this weird lens of it wasn't all that bad. Yeah, it was, you know, better than this or better than that. Which that's is that's like, not the way you talk about this, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's changed a lot, I think, recently. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that, you know, it's not like a useful tool for us to think about, well, this type of slavery is better than that type of slavery. I think it's more valuable as historians to think about, well, what are the implications of this for, you know, the time period, mm -hmm. for the um, way things move forward, um, and not to sort of just compare it you know, in terms of it, this is good and that's bad, right? Yeah, for sure. So anyways, you want to describe... Um, oh, wait, I, <laughs> no. is there anything else to say about it? I mean, uh, yeah. it's the same thing with uh, uh, Hudam as well. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's a kind of... I think particularly in terms of the Suleiman, you know, romance, there's a kind of, yeah, like a... you know, fantastical aspect of it, but we're talking about... Real people. Real people. You know, the show does show in the first episode, like, how devastating it was for Hudem to lose her whole family yeah. in war. And so these women would be taken as sort of prizes of war. Mm -hmm. um, so at least it does that. But then to think that, you, you know, know... It's worth it if you become the empress. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. not really the kind of trade-off we, we, <laughs> we can judge at all, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, where is Persia? Oh. Is that, is, that, uh, is that a little Yes, oh, okay. okay, that's going to be some error Oof. score. How much time do I have? <laughs> Five that turns. Hurts. Okay. To get how much error score? We are not getting the golden age, might get a normal age. You think so? <laughs> how is it possible? <laughs> I don't know, but I got to keep getting units, right? Yeah. More horsemen, they're pretty fast. You will be getting a commercial zone yes. from Ankara. Yes, one turn. That's good. Um, maybe I should, let me just lock in mine here. But I don't think I need to build that. I think I need to keep building units. Okay. Probably swordsmen because they will upgrade to Janissaries. I did already have two and I really want this settler. That would be <laughs> really nice. Can I go all the way? I would have to probably come he here first and hit the 
warrior. Let's see if that helps at all. Okay, I'm gonna try to get that settler. That would okay. be nice. That may be consolation for not getting the golden age. <laughs> Looks like the man at arms is almost dead too. Well, yeah, but they can probably easily kill this guy. So I'm thinking, do I move? You do have a horseman there that could attack it. It's out of movement. Mm. Everyone's out of movement. I think it's gonna kill my archer. I think another archer is RIP. Oh no. Maybe I can be. I think, yeah, try Just, it. But then I don't wanna lose loyalty in here. You have Ibrahim Pasha in there though, right? Yeah, it's not enough. Mm. I need to maybe move, how much time do I have? Eight turns? Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Don't kill the archer. The archer's dead. I don't see how it's not dead, but we'll see. Okay. I'll try my best. Okay, next Let's turn. Try it. I really need Baghdad. I need its farms. Oh, okay, there we go. Archer survived. It actually hit the warrior. How dumb is the AI? <laughs> what were they thinking? Okay, plus three era score. That's okay. actually, we only need 12 more. When are we getting the Temple of Artemis? It's four turns. Four Return. turns. Oh, we I need, need one more chop. Okay, good call. Good call. That should be good. Okay. Oh, yeah, and I can flip Kohokia now. Okay. Right? If I put two in here. Let's try this. Okay, yes. a little bit more era score. Not too bad. We need 10 more. 10 more era score. And now if I hit co uh, get <laughs> hit them, if I use the traitor, <laughs> yeah. I'm like used to talking about war now. Let's try that. Great. Okay. So Did ten. not give us error score, but... No, but it gives us the option to levy. Right. If we make more money. That's true. I can also levy up here. The one... It'll give us error score. It might be worth it. Okay, let's do... I don't have to do it now. Unless, you know, if them going in will give me, like, pillages maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's find Persia. It's yeah. about time. Yes. Hello, Cyrus. <laughs> You're supposed to be my neighbor. Okay, now we're at 35, so we need oh, okay, good. seven more. That's not good. That's not bad. Okay, okay, anyways, you can go back to history. I think I'm okay. Should we bring that warrior back into Medina? Which one? This one? No, I have five turns. That's it. So let me bait with this guy now. Yeah, I think that could work. Okay. I mean, could you try attacking with that one? Maybe not. I might attack with the archer. archer. Yeah, I think we could probably get him, right? Yes. And a promotion, too. So we make up for that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Plus three promotion archer. Yeah. Sad, sad. Okay, let's see. Um, so we met Persia. They're all the way on the other side. Yeah. They should be, like, actually, it works pretty well. Like, Baghdad is kind of. This yeah, but, far away. Yeah, Jerusalem, Baghdad. Yeah, that kind of works pretty well. Persia should be like over here. here yeah. But I mean, I guess technically the map wraps, wraps around, so they are over there. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit more about Ottoman-Persian relationships? Or maybe yeah. we've already talked about their wars, mm -hmm. maybe more of their cultural connections. Yeah, I mean, there's a very strong element of competition, rivalry, but also exchange. Um, you know, I mean... Even in the midst of conflict, for example, Selim and Ismail would exchange these kind of poetic competitions, right? These kind of like poetic insults and boasts and jousts, right? And um, Suleiman, for instance, when he was constructing Suleimania, the Shah of Iran, Tahmas, sent him a box of jewels saying, you know, I heard you're kind of hard up because you're building your mosque. You know, here's some jewels to help you out. Wait, which mosque is this? Suleimania. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Suleiman was very annoyed, so he just poured this whole box of jewels into the mortar for the... Wow. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, very salty. <laughs> Tahmas also sent a beautiful illustrated Shahname, right. that kind of Persian, no, national, not national, but... It, it became national. It became national, but imperial epic, we can say. Yeah. Um, From much earlier. Yeah. Uh, 10th century? Yeah. 11th? Yeah, yeah, for no see. And um, he sent this beautiful illustrated thing just, again, as a kind of boast, Ooh. right? Like, but there's a lot of competition happening with the early modern empires. As yeah. we discussed, I think it was in our first episode, right? A lot of these empires want to be universal empires. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. whether it's Hungary, Ottomans, Persians, and later on the Mughals, um, I'm sure I'm missing others but those are the ones i know of mm -hmm. yeah and there's many many wars between persia and the ottomans um generally the ottomans have kind of the upper hand but <laughs> during certain times for example uh during the safavid shah 
a boss. Um, he really um, recaptures Baghdad, actually. Uh, speaking of Baghdad, bad news just lost okay. a swordsman. Right. And they have a crossbowman now. Oh, and this became a man-at-arms. Do I have the card in for these guys? Where's my... There's a horseman also right there. Where? Oh, that's okay. That's fine. I mean, there's not much they can do. It. I guess they could pillage. We could upgrade one of these warriors into a man-at-arms here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now that we have man-at-arms, I need... Oh, I have exactly 20. Okay. And we're one turn away from Temple of Artemis. I have exactly 20 iron. How many turns do we have until... Medieval era? Three. Three. Okay. Now, one issue is that if we upgrade that warrior, we probably can't levy Cahokia, right? Yeah. Maybe Jerusalem. I think this is pretty cheap. Okay. 90. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, let's see what I can do here. I am pretty upset that they got a crossbowman. That's Yeah. But really we should be able to take back that right now, right? We can, yes. The question is, do I pillage this farm... We need the farms for later, I think. For feudalism? Yeah, exactly. So like maybe I not see. pillage. Well, let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five. I only need one more farm, and I do have one, one builder. Charger, yeah. How many turns till it gets here? Three. Can you just build it there and then <laughs> remove it when we get the uh, error score? That's true. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. a better okay. idea. So let me see. How do I save all my units? I don't want anyone to die. I'm really mad that they got crossbowmen. And you know what? Retribution. Taking your settler. Thanks. <laughs> oh my god, another crossbowman. I have to I have to go this way. Sorry, the settler's <laughs> just gonna take right be taken right back. That's no, okay. I can what can I do? I can keep pillaging with this guy. So let's keep moving around. Okay. Here's my issue. If I take the city here, mm -hmm. I have to be certain I will get the city. So let me make sure I hit it yeah. one more time. And then take the city. I think so. And... Yes! Very nice. Uh, <laughs> we did it. We did it. Okay. That didn't give us... Any error score, but... But it gave us the boost to feudalism. It is too late. Hmm. Hmm. What are we at now? We're still at the same. Okay, so we got a levy. Yeah. What else can we do? If we levy Jerusalem, I think that's two. That gives us a 38. If we levy Tokyo, that's another two. That's 40. So we need two more from that. What can we do to get two more? Um. Oh, Temple of Artemis, right? Oh, yeah, that's next turn. Okay. Yes, okay, we got it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We need enough money to levy Cahokia, so let's get some money as well. I don't think we do. No? How much is Temple of Armas? Okay, we'll see. I just want to make sure my people are going to be okay with... Yeah. This crossbowman's going to do a lot of damage. I think if I move here and then hit, it would be fine. Yeah, I think so. And if we lose it, you know... I just built it, so no promotions or anything. Yeah. Um, we have a warrior we can <laughs> sacrifice. No, but this is a two promotion warrior. We can't just sacrifice all my warriors. Um, all right. Um, You're very attached to these warriors. Well, because they're going to become our Janissaries, right? That's true. That's true. Uh, and then, is this. What's this? This is just like a really nice tile for them? Is that a wonder <laughs> or something? Let's make a deal. Uh, open borders. What do you want? Fine. Fine. Actually, maybe I can sell stuff to them now that I found them. That's a good idea. <gasps> we got a wonder. We Very got a nice. wonder. Okay, and then I don't think I need to levy because Temple of Artemis should do it. Will it give us three? I think so. Let's, Let's see. see. Let's see. Let's move towards siege units. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, Wait, let's one, try. More, one more thing. Repair. Okay. Are you ready? This might be it. Okay. That was not what I was expecting right now. <laughs> Here's Temple of Artemis. Okay, very nice. It's so beautiful. Temple so of beautiful. Artemis. Um, yeah, in Ephes, in Turkey. Yeah. So appropriate to take it for... 42 out of 42. Yes, we did it. Oh we did my it. god. 
Okay, I need to breathe. We did lose that worker, though. Oh, no, we lost the, set, the settler. And the worker. What worker? Up there. Wait, the excuse horseman. you? <laughs> what? Okay, whatever. Good thing we got that chopping. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it back. I got this one <laughs> one swordsman up here. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm thoroughly stressed. This is long <laughs> enough of an episode. Let's continue next time. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so I'm pretty proud of us. We got to um, 42 out of 42. The era is coming next two turns. Okay. We got Baghdad. We are well on our way to getting Cairo. We just need some men-at-arms. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to get that settler back. I'm going to get that builder back. I think I can do this. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series. <laughs> Please let me know uh, what you think in the comments. I love reading the comments. You know, I, I'm really, really so touched by all the support we're getting mm -hmm. from the Civ community. You know, especially TGM, the game mechanic uh, hosted me in his stream. That was really awesome. Uh, I also got a comment from Van Bradley in our first episode. That was really cool. So thank you everyone for the support. Thank you all for watching. Um, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> bye. Bye.